Has it been forgotten? Has it been abandoned? Has it been lost to time? What was once the largest thing to fly in the sky and the most powerful is now here. Do we need to remember it? Do we need to rescue it? The mighty Martin Mars, save BC, should now BC save the Mars. I was born in Port Alberni, grew up in Port Alberni, was mayor of Port Alberni. So the, the, the bomber, water bomber has a huge significance for the people of this valley. Oh, well, as soon as you hear the, the Martin Mars coming over, everyone runs out of wherever they are. Uh, their homes, their offices, uh, you know, if they're getting their hair done, they're out of the barber's chair and out in the street watching the, the Mars fly over. At any point, you stopped what you were doing to see what was going on. And where I actually live, there's several times it would be coming right at me. And I'm sitting there going, lift, lift, lift. Because it, just, it, it always lifted. But sometimes it was pretty close to those trees. You know, every time you heard it fly over, it was, ah, OK, we're now going to be safe. I've been around for a long, long time. And uh, it has significance in terms of of safety and many people have been associated with the water bombers over the over the decades. Good morning everybody. I think this is the best backdrop I've ever had. The original intent was for these water bombers to protect the timberlands on the west coast of Vancouver Island. And yet the transformation of these aircrafts made them the biggest firefighting aircraft worldwide. There are only two Martin Mars water bombers remaining in existence. The one over to my right and the one behind me, the Hawaiian Martin Mars water bomber. Our government is so excited and proud to be providing $250,000 to support the final journey of this water bomber. Understanding is what this would need to get it uh, ready for transport and uh, flying again would be probably several months maybe of maintenance. Uh, I think mainly on the engines, we need to have some uh, work done on them. And um, I think from there, it sounds like it might be ready to be certified for flight. And then I guess flown down to Victoria and ready to be stored in the museum. I think it's great that it's going to the museum. Uh, they're going to be able to obviously <clears throat> maintain its integrity and, and be able to preserve it for hopefully decades and maybe even centuries to come and, and be able to hold on to this piece of uh, history. I'd like to invite up our wonderful president of the BC Aviation Museum who's without his help, especially over the last year, we would get to this point, uh, Mr. Steedman. First of all, I'd like to thank a Tourism, Arts, Culture and Sport Minister Lana Popham and her staff for supporting and providing, or they're supporting this project and providing the $250,000 uh, in the form of a grant that allowed us to afford this undertaking. The aircraft, as we all know, is now obsolete and it needs a new home. Happily, the BC Aviation Museum at the Victoria Airport is now the best place for the Hawaii Mars, where it can be open to the public for many years to come, seven days a week, all year long. The Mars aircraft, as you've heard before, were converted from military transports to water bombers at the Victoria Airport in 1960. Uh, they've always been based here on Vancouver Island, and it is good to see that the Hawaii Mars will be staying on the island where it has operated from for over 50 years. In doing so, it became one of the most iconic aircraft in Canadian aviation history, instantly recognizable for its ability to put out a forest fire in a single pass. A really quick story, how did I become the Project Mars leader? Well, I used to swim out in that lake and get people's empties from the, from the park who were camping there and go down to the bait shop, get my candy and I fell in love with this plane. How many times did I see it? Um, I know someone said today, uh, you felt safe when you heard it coming. Absolutely. My dad and I connected 
uh, over our love with this aircraft. We would follow around, find out when it was giving a demonstration. We actually chased it, saw it drop on a fire. When I was in the forest firefighting service, obviously knew it was in action. And I had once had the coolest job where uh, Japanese lumber customers would come to the island when I worked for Macmillan Bodell and I would bring them on tours of the Mars and I would translate all the stories from the engineers and the pilots and the staff and they would fascinate me and it would fascinate the Japanese customers and they would always want to come back and it just I kept thinking wow this aircraft is incredible and then two years ago in the, in the news I saw on a Monday that the plane was up for sale, it was gonna go overseas, and I thought, that's not right. And my whole family went, don't do anything, don't do anything. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then by Wednesday, I couldn't take it anymore. I called the museum and I talked to the volunteer manager, and what are you gonna do with the Mars? He's like, we've been trying to get Wayne Colson on the phone for 10 years, and he won't call us back. And I went, what, that's, I don't believe that. Hung up the phone, a couple phone calls later, I had Wayne uh, Colson on the phone. I said, Wayne, Shouldn't the plane go to the BC Aviation Museum in Victoria? He goes, I've been trying to call those guys for 10 years. They will never return my call. And I said, really? I said, Wayne, what if I come up there? We, we just connected over the plane. What if I come up there? We'll start the, the talk. Let's figure this out. He goes, great. Be in my office on Friday at 1030. Hung up. OK, called the museum back. OK, it's Richard again. You don't know who I am. Not connected to you, but I got a meeting on Friday. Should somebody come with me? They're like, what? What? Get up to the museum right away. Let's find out if you're crazy or not. <laughs> and so uh, uh, at that time, Mac Duffield and Bob Saunders, I met with them and they determined that I wasn't that crazy, just really enthusiastic. And we did a three hour ride up here, bonded all the way, had this great meeting with Wayne, uh, saw that he really did want this plane to stay. And all the way back, we planned it, and they said, you're the project leader. You're crazy enough to take this on. You're the guy. So um, two years later of talking to lots of people, many of you are, who are here and negotiating, we know Heritage Canada knows about the plane. They have told us they want to certify the plane. They want to get behind us. The Van uh, Victoria Airport is giving us more land. So much stuff is coming together. This announcement today is it's just so fantastic. and go back to where they started in, in BC. You know, they, they first landed in, at the Victoria Airport. So at the end of the day, that's kind of fitting. I think it's tremendous. I, I think the history uh, of the province with these aircraft and what it's done for the aircraft and the people be amazing. Um, I'm just happy to see it saved. I mean, much as it would be nice to have it in the valley, I think that's a good place for it. It's going to be an international draw. As it is here, we, we see people coming into this property all the time to see them, and I think that's a wonderful place for it to be. So, as much as we'd like it in the valley, but it's the best solution. It's well maintained. Well, if it can be put in a place where people are still going to be able to benefit from the story of the Mars, that's fantastic. And if Pat Bay is the place that it can happen, that's even better. It was great to get to fly it. You know, I never thought I'd ever do that, let alone do it again. There's going to be probably five of us. It takes three engineers and a couple of pilots. And it's good, yeah, it's great. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be exciting. There's a dint uh, just above that hatch, uh, that uh, rectangular hatch there, that I think I might have been responsible for. It might have been that one or this one, but it was right in this area of the plane. Uh, in 1967, it was out. Uh, convinced my boss that we should flush a saltwater engine out in the lake in this cabin, old wooden cabin cruiser. And I saw it as kind of a party boat. So me and my friends, teenage friends and their girlfriends, we all went out one late one evening and we're putting around the lake listening to music and the helm was at the back of the boat. And so somebody had to be out in the back and I think it was maybe even raining a bit. So nobody really wanted to be in the back, everybody wanted to be in the cabin. So the guys and their girlfriends took turns driving the boat. When my turn was up, I was in the cabin, sitting, listening to the music, enjoying, and I realized I was getting pretty crowded in here, and there was eight of us, and I counted, and all eight were in the cabin. And I said to Pat Price, who's driving? And just then, kathunk. And we came out back and saw that we'd bumped into the plane. And I showed the dent for years and years after to people, but I've never fessed up to it before. So, Now, how do you feel about You know, 
I hope they embrace the fact that it's in the best places. The final flight, the blockbuster weekend. It will be in fall of 2024. And the pilot, Pete Killen, are you you're here, sir? I hear from you that if everything goes well, you're gonna go over Horn Lake, turn it in Nanaimo, and go down the East Coast? Maybe? East side of the island, if 800,000 people live on this island and 700,000 are from Nanaimo to Victoria, 700,000 people are gonna see this flight 200 uh, feet wide, 120 feet long, going at 150 feet over the water, maybe? <laughs> it's gonna land smoothly at Pat Bay on the ocean near the Victoria Airport. It's gonna be pulled out of the water onto a cradle that moves 360 degrees and do plain yoga around all the buildings, cross the airport runway in the middle of the night when it's shut down, set up at the airport, and then we will have, the whole world will get to be there for the big ribbon cutting. We're gonna make this so amazing, part of our massive uh, BC wildfire aviation experience. And so, thank you. Thank you so much for coming today. You can see I'm just bursting with excitement. <laughs> I knew a little bit about this, but I, and, until the minister said it out loud, it, it, it wasn't true. So, I, I'm just incredible. And it is, give them a round of applause. They were here early, Jennifer, everybody. Thank you, thank you so much.